Welcome back to Leah's Leaves. We're doing a seed haul today from Nikitovka Seeds in Irpin, Ukraine. And a bunch of stuff came in the mail today, including Holly's new Bark Box. She got, we love her Bark Box subscription. Every month she gets three treats and two toys. And this time she got a squeaky Valentine cookie inside a little Valentine envelope. And she also got a cake, plus a bunch of um, edible treats, some of which she's already indulged in, which is why she's kind of in her food coma now. So, Nikitovka Seeds is a little seed company in the Ukraine. They collect heirloom varieties that are regionally grown, and so they're acclimated to northern growing zones in particular, their tomato and pepper selection is awesome. They have some very interesting varieties. Again, especially if you're somebody in, say, zone 6 or lower and you have a shorter summer season, these are great short season varieties of tomatoes and peppers and other things. Um, their website's wonderful and very easy to navigate. And I want to show you just real quick so you know what to watch for how cool the packaging is. It's got the name of the company, the name of your plant, and the Latin name, the origin of the seeds, the pack date, the germination rate, a picture of your item, and on the back, detailed growing instructions for each type of seed inside a plastic sealed package. Love it. So without further ado, I'll show you what I picked. And these are in no particular order. I literally just dumped the envelope out and I'm going to grab things and show you. Number one, Native Sun Tomato. Because it was a beautiful, uniform shaped yellow tomato. And the only, I have two yellow tomatoes. No, three. Kellogg's Breakfast, Dr. Witchy's Yellow and Golden Jubilee, which is or the Jubilee tomato, which is an heirloom I've grown several seasons. Native Sun looked like it was going to be probably a more consistent result for me than the Jubilee tomato. So I'm going to try it this year. Dwarf Sunflower Eclipse. I'm investing real estate in my garden this year specifically to cut flowers. And this is an excellent cut flower option they're a, not a tall variety. They only grow, you know, a foot and a half or two feet tall. As opposed to the five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten foot tall sunflowers you're probably used to. Next. Dwarf Cherry Tomato Bahaha. Uh, this is a awesome patio variety, container variety. Uh, because I am limited on space and I have so many... Um, larger indeterminate tomatoes that I want to grow in gar in ground. Uh, I want to do more container gardening for smaller varieties. So this is a dwarf variety that will produce cherry tomatoes for me and be decorative. Next, Gargamel. I ordered these and then went through my seed collection, uh, at a later date and discovered I have a couple of Gargamel seeds that I got in a seed of the month package from Garden State Gardener on his YouTube channel. Uh, he does a seed of the month club that for $5, uh, Venmo, PayPal, Venmo or PayPal, um, he'll send you five types of seeds. So, um, but it, that package only had a few of them in here. This package, look at all the seeds that came with that. So anyway, I have Gargamel tomato seeds. And to the first person who leaves a comment in the video below, you have to be a subscriber to my channel and leave a comment telling me about your favorite thing about Gargamel either the tomato or the cartoon character, then you can be the winner of five free Gargamel tomato seeds. Dumas 
sweet pepper. Look how that grows in clusters. It's like a pepper tree, and it's growing all these peppers uh, in a... It appears... They're so um, close together in the pictures. I was looking at the pictures on online. That's what attracted me to this, because there are just so many peppers growing close together that... It, it looked almost like it has a vining habit. It doesn't. It's just clusters of fruit, but there's a ton of fruit on that. So I'm going to give that sweet pepper a shot. Velvet Red Coleus. And I love red coleus. And also I got these because I tried to save coleus seeds from my red plant this year. And they didn't. Um, I think the plant had been touched by a frost. And I didn't get to the seeds in time. They were kind of, the, the plant was already on its way out and damp. And I was concerned that the seeds would have mold. So I just ordered a fresh batch. Moss Rose Portulaca. Portulaca is a beautiful flower. I like Portulaca. I've never grown it. But it is a lovely flower. I'm growing portulaca and ranunculus this year for the first time. Um, because they have just gorgeous blooms. So I like the, the doubles. That's two layers of ruffles on the flowers. And I like those colors. Switching hands here for a second. I got silver princess daisies because I had silver princess daisies. And I think I put together a seed packet for my mom out to put on her wooded property. property and they were like perennial flowers and cold tolerant flowers. And then I, lo I uh, left them there. So when I moved to Pennsylvania, I didn't have any more silver princess seeds for myself. These silver princess is a dwarf daisy variety. So they're identical to Shasta daisies. They're just shorter. And so they're excellent border plant um, four beds winter cherry aster just look at the color on that aster I mean do you need to know why isn't that pretty baby sweet tomato baby sweet tomato this one by the description, reminded me a lot of the Juliet hybrids uh, that some of my friends grow, but this is an heirloom variety. But kind of the same uh, shape and the, the same size of fruit and general sub, uh, um, description. This was exciting to me, Dwarf Columbine. I need to, I can't remember off the top of my head if this was a biennial like a typical columbine i would love to grow columbines where i'm living but i don't i'm trying to avoid growing too many perennials because it's not my property i'm just renting here um but this dwarf columbine i can grow in a container environment and then even if it doesn't bloom this year or if i move or whatever i can just take it with me so i'll still get my columbines they're gorgeous Oh, this is very exciting. It's the most exciting cucumber. Cucumber Titus. This is an F1. So it hasn't reached heirloom status yet, but it is a stable seed. And these are small. Um, it's not a very good picture of them, but they're basically fingerling cucumbers. They're thinner and like skinnier than a lot of pickling varieties. So they're more like um, the closest variety I can think of that you might have heard of before is muncher cucumber. Um, but this plant had good disease resistance. And I just like the size of the fruit for general all-purpose pickling. So I got me some cucumber titus and I'm definitely planting this this year. Zinnia orient mix. So sometimes that's also called Aztec. And I've been looking for seeds with that coloration to add to my zinnia patch and Nikotovka had a good price on it. So I went ahead and ordered those. Paper Daisy. Isn't that beautiful? And the beautiful colors. 
They are look like um, like straw flowers. So they have very delicate, um, thin petals and a nice big center. Those are going to make beautiful cut flowers. This tomato is a pink uh, beefsteak variety, bogema, bogema, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But anyway, it just was a huge fruit and it was a pink variety. And I, I only had one pink tomato, um, the pink ox heart that I was going to try this year. And then the pink Berkeley tie dye too, but that has stripes to it. So as far as like a solid pink color, this one looked like a winner for me. Three hearts mix. This is an ox heart mix. So there's orange, yellow, pink, and uh, red ox heart tomato seeds in this package all mixed together. So I'm going to, I love ox heart tomatoes because in general, they tend to ha have very few seeds and not much gel. And so there's a good deal of flesh and they're pretty on the vine and they color early. And they just, uh, in my experience, growing different varieties of ox heart um, particularly last year, I had great success with one called the Golden King of Siberia. And it was a consistently gorgeous, uniformly shaped and sized fruit that was um, resistant to cracking and just very hearty. Uh, a hearty, meaty tomato. Good flavor. So I'm excited to grow those. Who knows what color I'll get. Oh, this is a beautiful shade of yarrow. It's the darkest red on a yarrow I've ever seen. I'm growing some yellow yarrow this year that are just seeds that I saved from my garden. And then two years ago, I got seeds for summer berries yarrow. I think I got those from Botanical Interests. And they're like a combination of yellow, pink, and white all mixed into a variegated yarrow. But the color on this one just looked absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to throw those in the yarrow mix as well. Can you imagine bright yellow and bright red yarrow growing in, in between and among each other? Just going to be pretty. Tom Thumb Snapdragon mix. I am growing regular snapdragons as well, but I liked the idea of a smaller variety. These are a dwarf variety of snapdragon that won't grow as tall. Uh, that would be a good border option, or they'd be good in smaller bouquets. So snapdragons are one of my favorite flowers anyway, and they're very easy to grow in my climate. So this just gives me some options. So many options. I must have ordered two of them. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Oh, friendship tomato. Look at that beautiful orange-yellow tomato. Uh, six to eight ounce fruits. Pretty color, consistent growth habit. Some stevia. I have balked at stevia. Uh, I lived in a house. Uh, my former landlady grew stevia, and so I had used it fresh. And I had never really warmed up to the flavor of it. But I am interested in trying to learn to like it. I want to be able to get to the place where I can use stevia products and, and think they actually taste good. And I haven't gotten there yet. I'm still learning how to like stevia. So anyway, I'm going to plant a little bit in my garden. And my discipline this summer will be to learn how to like it. This is one of the tomatoes I'm very excited about. I got a granny's throwing tomato. <laughs> That's a, it's a big tomato. It has an interesting teardrop shape to it. And I can't wait to throw one. There's a beefsteak. It's an orange tomato. Huge. Meaty. They can grow up to two pounds. Tomato necessary size. I've heard of that variety before. I finally got one. Whopper Yunnan sweet pepper. Thick walls. Quick producing. Large fruit. Sweet bell variety. Um, for my growing season being shorter in my new house than it was in Virginia where I was living, I felt I, I want to give my peppers the greatest advantage. And so 
growing one that's acclimated to a slightly shorter growing season is probably in my best interest. Isn't that a pretty pepper? And I want the peppers take a long time and I don't have a long summer and I live in the mountains. So even, you know, even when day length is longer, I still have hills around me. Then they, they do impede the amount of direct sun that my garden gets in general. And so it's hard for me where I live to get a fully ripe red pepper ripened on the vine before my first frost. So this is one that I want to try and hopefully I'll be able to get a fully ripe uh, batch of red peppers. Not have to be forced to pick them green or ripen them on the countertop, but, you know, really give them time to develop their full flavor and full color naturally attached to the plant. Okay, next. Dwarf, uh, oh, zinnia lily put. This is a dwarf variety of zinnia. This is another border flower that I wanted. The Double Dahlia Pon-Pon Mix. Because they're pon-pons. And they're dahlias. So like, win-win. Okay. Oh, a new type of beetroot. I love, I, I hated red beets like three years ago. They were my least favorite vegetable. And I was determined to learn how to like them and how to cook with them. And get more of them in my diet. And so I just went on a mission to find ways to prepare beets. And now I have learned to really like them. And that particular beet called Red Ball just had a beautiful shape to it, beautiful color. And the by description, a consistent uniform size, which is something I haven't had in my beets so far. I, I get big beets and small beets and They'll be growing right next to each other in the exact same growing conditions. And some of them grow and some of them don't. So I'm looking for consistency in my beets. Next, excited about the carrots. I got two carrot varieties. One is called yellow caramel. And the other one is in here somewhere. Somewhere. Oh, maybe I didn't get it. Nope. I have to go back over my order. I might have just gotten the yellow one. Because I didn't have any yellow carrots. There was another one in this caramel series. It's a series of carrots on Nikitovka. But anyway, they all looked good. Anyway, I got the yellow one. Russian apple tree. I'm super excited to grow this variety. This is an indeterminate trellising variety that grows large clusters of saladet type uh, tomatoes. And again, uh, requires a shorter growing season. So I think I can get, you know, whole ripe tomatoes out of it. Sweet pepper, midnight dreams. Going back to my earlier comment about wanting fully ripe, fully full colored ripe fruits on my pepper plants by the end of the season before the first frost. So ordering from a place where they're acclimated to a shorter growing season I may actually get my wish. Look how pretty that black pepper is. Mm -mm -mm. Here's another one. Rotunda. I love the shape of this one. Kind of reminded me of a sheep nose pimento. Or the uh, last year for the single seed challenge 2021. My single seed was the Chemeg stew stuffed tomato. And the only difference was it was a good stuffing and grilling tomato that had some variegated color on the side it was red with um, orange and yellow stripes but it had this same kind of shape to it this is the sweet pepper rotunda it's supposed to be very sweet very thick walls not many seeds and a good stuffing or grilling pepper and just an overall good flavor some radishes i love my radishes and this was just a new variety of a red radish so I'll just throw those in the garden. Radishes are lovely because you can grow them all summer long. You can start them in cool weather and just, you know, plant them among things. You can put radish seeds under your tomato plants and your tomatoes will shade them so they don't get too hot and bolt. And you can have uh, succession sow radishes for your whole season. Plus they're a quick growing crop. So there's 
a good deal of satisfaction in planting a radish on the first of the month and having radishes the first of the next month. They grow very fast. And finally, turgai. Turgai tomato is another beefsteak variety. Pretty color, pretty shape, good disease resistance, and acclimated to my general growing conditions. Okay, so that's my Nikitovka seed order. I recommend this company. Their prices are excellent. Their selection is excellent. Uh, like I said, I ordered them on January 15th. I know that the order, I got the confirmation that the order had been filled within 48 hours. So they filled the order very quickly and got it in the mail. So it just took some time. And I don't know, you know, here it is February 2022. As a frame of reference, there's uh, some brewing conflict developing on the border between Ukraine and Russia. Um, I would still order from them anytime and just pray that not only for Russia and Ukraine not to go to war and for there to be a peaceful intervention there, but also that anything that does happen between those nations wouldn't impede the success of this company because they're helping people to grow food and they mail internationally their product is good, their information is good, their graphics are good, their germination rates are good, their selection is good, their prices are good. You just can't go wrong. All right, so if you've never checked out nikitovkaseeds.com, I recommend it. It's nikitovka.com. You see the website at the bottom of the packet. I'll also leave that in the description so that you have a link to use. As always, I'm learning a lot sharing it here. Uh, hope you'll come grow with me. Bye.